Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Asher and I'm doing something a little bit different than what I usually do. Uh, this is actually going to be a tutorial, a very basic tutorial overview of OBS Studio. How to set up, how to start streaming basically because you get a lot of questions of like, I don't know where to start, I don't know how to do this, things like that. So this is going over the... PC side of it. I've never streamed from a console. It would be very similar if you were using some type of capture card in a pass-through. You could do the same exact thing using the steps that I'm going to go over and I'll kind of go into that when we get there. But let's just jump right into this as best I can. So the first thing you're going to see here is OBS itself. That's right there on the screen. This is what you get. The only difference is going to be these left here where it says the scenes. Those won't be there when you first download it. So you have to download OBS Studio. I will put a link in the description of this video as well. And this is also going to be in the Discord that the Rage guys and myself are putting together to help streamers. So that's what this is mainly for. That's why I'm doing this. But I'm going to leave it up on YouTube on my channel just in case anyone else stumbles across it and would like to use it as well. So... The first thing that you need to know is the uh, scenes and sources. They're two separate things, but that is in essentially that's what makes OBS do what it does. So your scene is going to be everything on the screen at once. Your sources are the individual elements of what is on your screen. So I've already made one here that's called tutorial, but in order to do that, you just right click, you hit add and you name it. And that's that. And you'd have a scene ready to go. Your sources again right click add are all of these different things right here so a source could be a static image which that's how what you would use as like an overlay if you wanted to put like a backdrop or a background behind any of your video feed use an, an image source to do that if you want to add your webcam that's going to be your video capture device and when you select something like this it pops up you can name it if you want, but it pops up a lot of options and it pertains to whatever that thing is. So for here, this is detecting my webcam and it would pop up on here. I'm not going to right now because it's not necessary. And you set it up and it pops up on the screen and you can resize it. What I will show you, as uh, now that you can see, we're going to add another one, is a game capture. That's typically what I use. Uh, that's what I use when recording specifically. We're going to be focusing more on the streaming, but pretty much everything I'm saying, it also applies to recording. It just doesn't broadcast to Twitch or wherever you'd like to broadcast it. So if you were to hit game capture, and this is how I've always set it up, uh, you have this option that says capture any full screen application. I don't like that. I've never used that setting. You change that to capture specific window. Once you do that, you get this option on here that says window and anything that you have running in the background, you should be able to detect unless for some, I've ran into one or two games that I had a hard time with this, but anything mainstream you won't. Um, and those are going to be like very few and far between. Those are the outliers. As you can see here, I have another OBS open because I, that's how I had to record this. Uh, I have a notepad open. I have a discord window open and I have overwatch open. So if we select Overwatch, there you go. It gives you your preview of the game in the background. Uh, one thing that is important that you want to make sure you're doing is your mic right here. This is, I'm, I, there's only a little bit I can do on here because I'm using the other one as well. But this you want to make sure is turned on as well. So if you go into like your properties, change it to whatever mic you want. This is the one I typically use is my AT2020. And once you do that and it's live you will see little bars right here that indicates it. This right here, this slider, this will turn you up or down. So if you want to manually change your sound when, while you're broadcasting, this is where I would start. Change it right here on the mic. Your desktop audio as well. This is the sound of whatever you're capturing. Like this right here is going to be my main desktop. And then my video capture device, I have that turned off because a lot of... Um, a lot of webcams have mics built into them, so you mute that because you don't want to be hitting with double audio. You only want just the one mic to go. So this is how you would do that. This is how you change everything. So I have it muted for Overwatch because I don't need it right now, but you can see right here, this is exactly what it would capture. This is exactly what it would be broadcasting right now. If you had a webcam on here, it has that second window. 
you should see this little red box right here. This is how you resize things. So if I wanted to resize this window right here and put it in the corner right there for some reason, I could do that. Like, for example, if you had a second scene, you could make the window for the game smaller and your webcam picture bigger if you wanted to emphasize your face that would be your second scene and you would switch from scene to scene so like this would be your main game scene this would be your webcam scene that is actually all of my regular stuff that i record but you and you stream you seamlessly would switch between your two scenes but again trying to keep it really basic right now so i don't want to get too far into it that's how you capture it that's how you would start and that's what this again that's what this video is designed to do there's a lot of advanced stuff you can do with obs but this is a very where do i start how do i do this type of th presentation okay so we're gonna hide that right there because i don't need that we're gonna hide that because i don't need that we're gonna go into some settings so your far right button on here says settings that's what you're looking for you hit that button and general typically you don't need to mess with anything i keep mine at a dark theme that's the only thing i ever change because uh i like things to be darker i guess i don't know it's just my personal preference you also have language options here this is for an english speaking audience but if you uh it's your second language then that's where you'd want to change that you've got quite a few different options there and the stream tab here on the left hand side this is important so you want to make sure it's on streaming services for Twitch. If you're using a custom one, like um, I'll do another video possibly later on about how to use um, Light Source. But right now, we're going to keep it simple again. So streaming services, your service is Twitch, and you put your stream key right here. Your server can be auto. Uh, if you're having issues with like upload and things like that, you may want to try and change this to whatever server is closest to you. Mine would be Dallas, typically. Dallas, Denver, Houston, those three are usually the ones that I would go for. Um, but auto should be fine for the most part. And again, stream key goes right here. In order to get your stream key, now I'm not gonna show you this, but in order to get your stream key, you find it on your dashboard on Twitch. Again, this is Twitch-centric. So I'm gonna move this window over here for you. On your dashboard, in your settings, on the left-hand side here, has this button that says show key. When you hit that, you get this pop-up window. You hit I understand and it will give you this huge key. I'm not clicking it again because you need to keep this safe. Anyone who has this key can stream to your Twitch channel, okay? So don't do it. Don't give that out. No one ever asked for that. No one ever needs it, all right? Keep that safe. Unless you know absolutely sure what you're doing and why you're giving that out, don't ever do it. It goes right there in that box. And once that is in that box, when you press this start streaming button, it's going to stream to your channel. All right. So moving on a little bit here, uh, we're going to go over your bit rate real quick. And that is going to be under output. So there's something you got to understand here. Um, the higher the bit rate, the better the quality, right? But the higher the bitrate, the harder it is on your internet for your upload speed to upload it properly. And some people may not be able to view it based on their internet speeds. Also, if you're not affiliated yet, if you, if you become an affiliate on Twitch, the uh, viewer has the option to change the quality on it. But if you're not, they don't. So you're going to want to stick between 2000 and about 3500 on the bitrate right here. If your screen does not look like my screen looks right now, you need to change up here where it says output. You're probably on this because this is the simple looking mode. I, do, I don't use simple, I you just go into advanced. Either way though, that's where you can change your bitrate on both. Uh, for these purposes, simple would probably work. And your software encoder on here is going to be based on what type of graphics card you're using. Again, we're keeping this very short and simple right now. Uh, for those who have further tech questions, we are always in our Discord. We can help you with those. But simple setup. So that's your bit rate. Keep it between 2,000 to 3,500. Trust me, you will thank yourself later. Uh, your rate control here where it's CBR, I'm fine with CBR. Leave that stuff alone unless you're having issues and look for further assistance, okay?
And there's one other thing that I wanted to go over, two things actually, this rescale output right here. I use this myself because I use a 2K monitor. I don't want to upload 2K video while I'm streaming. So you can downscale this to I can to 720. That will make it a whole lot easier on your connection. If you can do 1080, by all means do 1080. But that's where is you want to make sure you can do 720 first. Move up from there. Don't move down. Find where your sweet spot is first. This is as low as it goes right here. The 720, 2000 bit rate. I've got mine set at 3500, but that's where you start. Okay? Cool. Uh, your audio, I never really have to mess with because, again, I showed you the sliders on the front of there. And your video, again, don't really have to mess with this either because you're not, unless you're recording, that could change. Okay? Your hotkeys, the only thing I ever set is the start streaming, stop streaming hotkey. You don't have to. You can click it, but I have a hotkey for it. Cool. Uh, if you want to use OBS for recording purposes for like a YouTube video, it's very simple. You will change, go here instead of streaming, change it to recording. Now, when you're recording, things are a little bit different and your bit rate, you're not uploading anymore. So I keep mine at 10,000. But that's for another video at a different time. Sticking to streaming as of right now. All right. So I've shown you how to resize a video, how to add a scene, how to add a source on that scene, how to add your Twitch key, and how to set your bit rates. The last thing that I want to show you is, because I'm, we're going to do a video on it later, but um, to set up your Streamlabs. Streamlabs is going to manage your notifications like... This person followed you. This person subscribed to you. This is your history. Things like that. Streamlabs is going to be a whole separate video on how to set that up. But in OBS, the way you add Streamlabs is a browser source, right? And so that's what you're looking for. You go to the sources, right click browser source. You name it whatever you want. And you put your URL for the Streamlabs and you'll find, we'll show you that in the uh, Streamlabs video, but you put that right here where it says URL, that will make Streamlabs work for you. All right, so thanks for joining me for this. I hope this answers a few of those basic questions. If you have further questions that go beyond what I did in this video, feel free to reach out to us. We're more than happy to help for that. And until next time, guys, take it easy.